charter change, an expression known colloquially as cha-cha, and the phrase constitutional reform have resonated prominently across the Philippines in recent months. Their popularity springs from a single unified purpose – to transform the country's constitution. This significant shift is a highly anticipated development, eagerly awaited by a majority of Filipinos. Indeed, it's the very impetus that has propelled numerous politicians into office, all rallying under the same banner of constitutional alteration. However, a recent statement from a high-profile senator claimed that the Philippines has faltered in its mission to amend the constitution, going so far as to declare the charter change, or cha-cha, a failure. Amidst the chorus of these political voices, I offer a contrasting perspective. Despite their assertions, the situation as it stands is actually acceptable. While this may initially appear as a tangled web of complications, fear not. We will dissect this issue, unravel its intricacies, and together make sense of the convoluted scenario. By setting the stage with some crucial background information regarding the attempts to change the constitution in the Philippines. In its history, the Philippines has experienced numerous attempts at constitutional change. These endeavors have spanned several administrations, each with their own motivations and objectives. Some administrations aim to adjust term limits, seeking to extend the duration for which a politician could hold office. Others wish to radically reconfigure the government structure itself, moving from a unitary system to a federal one, in hopes of achieving more balanced regional development and local autonomy. Yet another compelling incentive for constitutional change revolves around the economic provisions entrenched within it. Some political leaders have pushed for the easing of restrictions on foreign ownership of businesses and land in the country. They argue that such a move would attract more foreign investment, stimulate the economy, and create jobs for Filipinos. However, these attempts to adjust the country's foundational legal document have been anything but smooth sailing. Each effort to amend the constitution has been met with significant challenges and resistance, often raising issues of constitutionalism, transparency, and democratic processes. Public scrutiny has been intense, as Filipinos, aware of their nation's checkered past with dictatorship and corruption, have remained vigilant in protecting their democratic rights. Whether these attempts to change the constitution were motivated by genuine reformist zeal or driven by more self-serving interests, has been a matter of debate contributing further to the complexity of the situation. It is against this dynamic and charged backdrop that we delve deeper into the recent controversial events surrounding the charter change, or cha-cha. Now let us go and understand this newly economic cha-cha, the most recent attempt to amend economic provisions in the constitution. This initiative aimed to relax economic restrictions and attract more foreign investments, potentially spurring growth in the country. So why did it fail? And more importantly, why might this not be a bad thing? From the complex legislative process, public mistrust, and issues of timing to the broader concerns about the potential consequences of such changes, we'll explore these factors in depth. While it may seem baffling why such a significant reform initiative, one that promised to attract foreign investments and spur economic growth, could fail, the answer is multifaceted. Economic cha-cha did not fail for a singular reason, but rather it fell victim to a host of challenges. One of the key stumbling blocks for the economic cha-cha was the palpable public mistrust in the motives of the government. The Philippines has a long and turbulent political history, which has seen its share of corruption and self-serving governance. Given this context, many Filipinos were apprehensive that the attempt to alter the constitution was not primarily for the economic betterment of the country, but a guise of other political motives. The call for transparency and a clearer communication of the benefits to the general populace seem to have been drowned amidst the legislative hustle and political debates. Furthermore, the timing of the initiative was also questionable in the eyes of many. The country, like the rest of the world, has been grappling with the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. With a healthcare crisis to address and an economy to recover, the focus on constitutional amendments was seen by some as a diversion from more immediate and pressing issues. This misalignment between public priorities and legislative focus further fueled skepticism about the economic cha-cha. Beyond public sentiment, the progress of changing the constitution itself is notoriously complex and time-consuming. 
It involves numerous readings, debates, and votes, both at the committee level and the legislative floor. It also requires a substantial consensus, which is often hard to attain given the diversity of political beliefs and affiliations in the Philippine legislature. In the case of the economic cha-cha, despite support from some sectors, consensus seemed elusive. Moreover, a lack of unity, even within the proponents of the change, posed challenges. While the broad objective was to attract foreign investments by easing restrictions, there were differing opinions on the extent of these relaxations and the sectors they should apply to. This lack of clear, unified vision further hampered the progress of the initiative. It's also worth noting the voices of economists and scholars who raised alarms about potential adverse effects of hasty liberalization. Concerns were voiced about the possibility of foreign enterprises dominating and stifling local businesses, increasing economic inequality, and compromising national sovereignty. These concerns, while not entirely negating the potential benefits of the economic cha-cha, added a note of caution to the discourse and likely played a part in its eventual failure. So now that we understand why it has failed, let us understand why it's actually okay for the economic cha-cha to not happen. As we've discussed, the failure of the economic cha-cha may seem like a missed opportunity, but it's essential to recognize that not all change is necessarily good change, and certainly not all change is right for every moment. Indeed, while the economic cha-cha offered potential benefits, its failure can also be seen as a cautious step in the face of several uncertainties and could be potentially beneficial for the Philippines. Here's why. First, failure to pass the cha-cha gives the Philippines more time for careful deliberation. The potential impacts of such sweeping constitutional changes are far-reaching and long-lasting. Hastily pushing through such amendments could lead to unintended consequences that may be difficult to reverse. By not amending the constitution at this point, the Philippines has given itself more time to contemplate, debate, refine, and prepare for such a significant shift. Secondly, the discussion about the cha-cha has initiated a broader conversation about the economy and foreign investments in the Philippines. This is, in and of itself, a positive outcome. It has forced the country to reckon with its economic position in the world and consider ways to attract more foreign capital. In doing so, it has also highlighted other areas that need reform, like improving the ease of doing business, building infrastructure, and ensuring political stability. Even without constitutional amendments, these efforts can go a long way to boosting the Philippines' attractiveness to foreign investors. Moreover, the failure of the cha-cha illustrates that democracy is at work in the Philippines. The fact that such a major initiative could be halted because of public opinion and legislative debate indicates that checks and balances in the country's political system are operational. It demonstrates that, in the Philippines, transformative decisions that will affect the lives of millions cannot be made unilaterally or without due consideration. Also, it's important to remember that economic liberalization is not a magic bullet. Even if the economic provisions in the Constitution were relaxed, it doesn't guarantee a sudden influx of foreign investment. Investments are influenced by numerous factors, including geopolitical stability, availability of skilled labor, infrastructure, and more. By rejecting the economic cha-cha, the Philippines might be motivated to work on these aspects and create an environment naturally conducive to foreign investment. And finally, the failure of the economic cha-cha can serve as an essential lesson for future attempts at constitutional reform. It underscores the importance of transparency, consensus building, and effective communication. It signals that any attempts at significant policy change should be carefully thought out, widely debated, and clearly communicated to the public. And that, my friends, is our deep dive into why the Philippines failed to change its constitution and why it's not necessarily a bad thing. As we've seen, constitutional amendments, especially those concerning economic provisions, are not a simple matter. 
They involve careful consideration of potential benefits and drawbacks alongside the current socio-economic context. While the failure of the economic cha-cha may seem like a missed opportunity, it also highlights the resilience and strength of the Philippine economy, which continues to grow and innovate within its current framework. While some may state that the Philippine economy could do far better with a new constitution that is still subject to debate, it is then assumed that these lawmakers are most likely going to stay in what has led to results, rather than a presumption. Either way, it should still not let Philippine society down. As we wrap up our discussion, remember that change is a process. And sometimes the status quo can offer opportunities for growth and transformation that we might overlook in our pursuit of change. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.